In the last video, we talked a little bit about the nature of software, what it is and what it does. In this video, we're going to talk about what software is good for and how different people categorize software. Okay, these are the software categories that Pressman gives in this book. Most of these should look familiar to you. As a simple exercise, I'd like you to pause the video and see if you can come up with at least one example from each of these software application domains. Ready? What did you come up with? In general, system software consists of operating systems, device drivers, and utilities. Application software consists of the applications you interact with every day, whether on your laptop or on your mobile phone. Some examples of engineering or scientific software would be AutoCAD, Mathematica, or something like SAS, which is a statistical package. Modern cars are a great example of embedded systems. They can contain up to 80 ECUs or electronic control units, which are essentially embedded systems that control some part of the car. For example, you might have a door controller, an engine controller, a speed controller, or even a seat controller. All of these controllers have software embedded in them. Product line software is software that's produced by assembling both reusable and custom components for products that have similar systems. For example, a company with a line of televisions that have slightly different features might use product line engineering to put together software for those TV sets. For examples of web applications, you got Amazon, Google, Orbitz, Examples of mobile applications, well, you know, just take your phone out of your pocket and look at it. And uh, you get some great examples there. Finally, when I think of artificial intelligence software, I usually think of two things. The first is robotics and the second is video games. Here's a list of software categories from Wikipedia. As you can see, it's divided into application software, system software, and computer programming tools. The third category, computer programming tools, should be reminiscent of Pressman's dual role for software. First, as a product, and second, like in this third bullet here, as a vehicle for delivering a product. Here's a screenshot from Amazon's website. Everything under software is going to be an application. This should give you an idea of how many products that they have in each category. Uh, utilities has the most products with 250,000 products. The next three are business and office, education and reference, and games. Each of those has between 30,000 and 40,000 products in it. And here's a text cloud that gives you a rough idea of the relative number of products in each category. Pressman talks about the changing nature of software with regard to these four categories, web apps, mobile applications, cloud computing, and product line software. Regarding web apps, his definition is fairly broad. So everything from a simple data entry form to a sophisticated travel website is considered a web app. Here are some of the features that web apps share. One of the most important, in my opinion, is the first. 
uh, and it's the fact that most web apps are backed by a database. Think of major web applications like Google, Amazon, and Orbitz. They all have these huge databases associated with them, and they have to manage that data. Continuous evolution means that unlike the application software on your computer, the applications are continually updated on the servers. Immediacy, security, their particular concerns because the applications are operating over a network. Mobile applications are not really that much different from traditional desktop applications. But there are differences. First, there's more of a limit on memory and processing power in a mobile device. And second, there's usually special hardware that the software can take advantage of, like, for example, the camera, the accelerometer, or the GPS. Cloud computing is not really a software category. It's more of an architecture that allows users to access their data from anywhere. For data to be accessed from any device, data has to be stored and managed in the cloud. It also requires a mechanisms for users to access that data. So, for example, issues of privacy and security are going to play a role. The final category of software we're going to talk about is product line software. Now, the motivation for product line engineering is that you're building similar systems, not necessarily software only systems, but systems in which similar software is going to be used, like television sets or washing machines. And you want to streamline your development process. So, how do you do that? Well, let's assume you have some legacy software that you've already developed. Let's say you start with at least three complete systems that are similar to each other. The first thing you need to do is analyze those systems and find the commonalities and variabilities that exist between those systems. This process is called domain analysis, and you'll often hear people using the terms domain engineering and product line engineering interchangeably. Once you've analyzed your legacy systems, you come up with a generic architecture for future systems. Some of the components within that architecture will be things that you can reuse in all of your systems. These are going to be the commonalities. And some of the components are going to be things that you're going to have to build yourself. So these are the variabilities. The point is that once you have this generic architecture, you can see how all the pieces fit together. And you can build future systems faster by combining the custom components with the reusable components. And that concludes this video on different types of software. In the next video, we're going to try to answer the question, what is software engineering? I'll see you there.